which brings us to this day 70 years ago, December 5th, when the uh, Flight 19 incident and disappearance took place. Could you give your account of where you were and uh, what, you, what your thoughts are concerning that day? Yes, well, for, um, uh, for starters, I have no idea of why I happened to be in the, the bar that day at noon. But um, while I was there, apparently having a beer, maybe, um, I started hearing all of these radio, back and forth radio commentaries concerning some lost airplanes. And on, upon f further notice, it dawned on me that these were from my own base and that five Avenger bomber type airplanes all were lost in the Bermuda Triangle. First thing that I, re I remember was that that it was unusual that I that I didn't know any of the, any of the pilots. I I was athletic officer, and I hadn't even had those pilots as as uh, they they weren't directed to my type of exercises yet. So apparently it was when I first arrived there that that all of this happened. While you were in the bar listening to these uh, re these reports coming out over those speakers, what was the sense of the uh, other people that were in the bar? Was there was everybody paying attention to it or was uh, it? Everybody, there weren't very many in the bar at that time for some reason or other. Apparently because it was 2.15 or so in the afternoon, I believe. Uh-huh. And, uh, but was there a conversation uh, from the between? We the heard or? we. I heard conversations between the pilots and and the base, and the, the pilots were saying which direction they were going, 120 miles this way, and then so far to the east and so far to the west, and well, it, it was along in there somewhere where where I got the report that the PBY that they sent out to track uh, and try to find the pilots, that that disappeared. And, and most of these, they figured, were within the Bermuda Triangle where nobody's compasses worked, worked at all. They, they just spun around in circles. Some of those last recordings were when their fuel was just about gone and they were discussing the fact that they were going to fly in formation into the sea. So ditch all together. They're going to all ditch, ditch together. So I'm assuming if they ever find the planes, they'll all be in somewhat of an order that would be easier to find than, than if they were scattered all over. I don't recall uh, uh, having anyone that evening to talk to in the, in the bar. I think everybody was so sad about the, the whole situation knowing without a doubt that the, the famous Bermuda Triangle had taken all those planes. And I still think so, but I'm not convinced yet for sure. Well, maybe we'll never know. Maybe we'll never know. Three or four hours after the, after it was known that they were lost, that they, were lost they sent the PBY out with 13 men aboard. And it wasn't very long after I had that word 
that there was no no more radio control back from that flight. Do you recall anything that uh, has significance as far as your conversations with other people? No, I don't. I don't. Uh, that was 70 years ago, <laughs> today, <laughs> and I don't. Uh, I don't recall having spoken to uh, any of the officers. It seemed like I would have recognized some of the fire, the flyers that disappeared that day, because not only those f pilots were missing, but the PBY that they sent out to try to find those pilots had 13 men on board, and they were all lost, all disappeared. Yeah, and they've never found, I don't think they've found anybody yet. How long after uh, the incident uh, was it before you were contacted by Mrs. Taylor, the mother of the lead pilot? Well, it, wasn't, it wasn't very long. I I don't know uh, who alerted her on the fact that I was in that bar. I might have been the only person in that bar that that afternoon. So I can't tell how long it was going to be or. Well, they, How it happened that she got my my name, and she was of course hoping that I I don't know how she could have thought that I could shed some light on the uh, especially on on the blame that her son was going through right right at the time. It was amazing, amazing how the, her in, interest how how surprising it was for her to spend letters and letters and calls and calls. There's one place where I saw a report of all of her letters to the Admiral in Washington. She never gave up. She must have spent hours and hours and hours contacting everybody involved, including me, who weren't nearly as important, really, as has really worked out. It was too bad that I couldn't have done something to help other than listening to all of the sad radio commentaries. I'm not sure who all knew that I was in that room at that time, but I was there. <laughs> And I don't know whether, maybe you questioned, maybe you questioned me. Because you spent quite a bit of time chasing down the poor woman who was, was dying because her son was taking the blame. Anyway, she, she finally got him exonerated from any blame on the flight. Did you hear from her at all any further? Or? No. After she got him exonerated, I didn't hear any more from Mrs. Taylor.